here you are with another uh, Lewis dot structure again of a, a molecule that's been drawn from us. In this case, it's the methanoate ion. This is a polyatomic ion. It when uh, methanoic acid or formic acid acts as an acid and loses its proton, it leaves behind this formate, which is a weak base. Now, as I said, the AP folks would show you the structure, but you probably would have guessed this one as carbon is usually a central atom. It's a ion, so it's a charge of negative one, so it's uh, very good to put these brackets to warn people that there's an extra electron. It also reminds you, too, so it's it's not just a totally altruistic action. Uh, if you just count the COOH, 1 plus 6 plus 12, you're going to get 17 valence electrons, which is, again, danger Will Robinson. It's an odd number of electrons. You're not going to run into that very often. So that also reminds you of this negative charge with that extra electron, uh, making this an anion. You've got a nice even 18 electrons. And we've done this before. We've drawn in the bonds. We have 12 leftover electrons. And zap, we put them on the outside, ignoring the hydrogen. We have zero leftover electrons. And you can see our oxygens have their octet because we always give the electrons to the outside folks except for hydrogen. Our carbon is deficient again. It's missing a pair of electrons. And we know we've got to put in a double bond. So we could take... Let me get my selector here and take one of the electrons, a pair of electrons here, and have them involved in the sharing. Um, and, you know, that would be very good. But notice both these oxygens are identical. I mean, they have nothing else attached to them. They're both attached to this carbon. Uh, you know, which pair of electrons would carbon decide to end up making the double bond with? This oxygen? making this a double bond or, whoops, okay, <laughs> stretching out some electrons, let me, let me be a bit more wave-like, or uh, this oxygen with its pair of electrons. And of course, you know, the question is carbon wouldn't be able to tell a difference between them. All electrons are the same. The two oxygens are the same. So, and you know, on the quantum level, it probably will do both, partly. And this is where we get our resonance structures, where you would not just draw one structure, you draw both because both are valid and, or both are the possibilities that you'd expect. Now, an interesting thing about this experimentally, uh, typically a, uh, let me flatten this, okay, so you don't get those extra things. Typically, a carbon bond, carbon oxygen bond will be 136 picometers. And a double bond, because of these extra pairs of, an extra pair of electrons pulling these guys in together with a little bit more force, it's closer together, a stronger bond, 123 picometers. It's an exothermic reaction. The actual bonds in the methanoate ion are all identical. There are 127, which is halfway in between here. And that's the experimental proof that this double bond isn't located in one location. This double bond actually is sort of distributed, delocalized. This little pi bond is actually in both places. And the distance, as a result, will not be as long as the single bond, not as short as a double, because the attraction is mitigated because you have the electrons delocalized, so you have 127 nanometers. All right, now be wary of resonance structures and questions that ask about bond distances. Because, I mean, and this, you mean, oh, you know, the bonds are, are going to be shorter here than here, but they would expect, AP would expect that you would know that this bond can be delocalized and will not be, you know, a solid double bond. It'll be a, like a one and a half bond. Okay, there we go. This one is worth noting in terms of bond lengths and an excellent example of resonance.